Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and let's see how broken the shuffler is in MTG Arena. We got that double banishing light goodness, so that's always fun. Um, it is an established proven fact, they tracked this over a million games, somebody did this, um, that cards group up, like cards group up. So if you've already drawn one or two from your deck, you're more likely to draw the rest of them than probability would suggest. And it's like four or five percent, but that's like every draw. So it, it piles up to be, yeah, you just see the same cards over and over and over. So, uh, I'm just playing my deck thinking, okay, it's going to be another game, but, uh, just wait till you see this. This is truly amazing. All right, and there's Speaker of the Heavens number two. Fantastic. Uh, he's running a similar deck to mine, but a weaker, slower, less consistent version. So, uh, spoiler alert about who wins. But uh, there's Banishing Light number one. All right, we swung. Cool. And Speaker of the Heavens number three. Fantastic. And this is in the first how many cards? It's not reasonable for me to count how many turns this is, but I think in the game we both draw about 15 cards. And in the top 15... You would almost be expected to not have a repeat. It doesn't quite work that way. People say, oh, well, 15, 15, 15, 15, 16, uh, 60 card deck. Oh, you should never pull a repeat in the first 15. That's not how it works. That's just, I'm not going to explain it, but that's not how probability works. So there's Basri Cat. Fantastic. All right. Well, I got my own Basri, so that's cool. And there's my third Banishing Light. What is it, like turn five? <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, man, allergies are terrible today. Terrible. I'm waiting for them pills to kick in, damn it. All right, so he gets that uh, temple. I think he put one on the bottom, so that kind of counts as, like, another card gone in the sequence. So there's another Basri. So he's on Basri number two. I'm on Basri number two. Fantastic. Everybody loves a good Baz off. Let's see who can out-Baz the other person. And remember, I got this at 150%. This guy gets super butt hurt and tries to time me out, by the way. Well, there's a Banishing Light. I'm not going to say, oh, well, that's the fourth one. No, we're playing two different decks. I don't even know how many copies he's playing. You can't really call that a thing. All right. Oh, Leonin. Ooh, spicy. Shouldn't put that in the deck. Too unreliable. Bye. Miss you. All right. So we get Archon. That's always fun. I tried to target it multiple times in this game, but that's not how protection from white works, FYI. So we're at six. Wonderful. And um, I'm, I'm very glad I got that backup Basri. That's always fun. Oh, here he goes. Yeah, he's he's all mad that I got to six and he can't stop me. So I'm going to time him out and I'm going to go cry to my mommy. Got so many butt hurt players. I built a better deck than you. Get over it. Like, stop putting things in a black-white life gain deck that costs four. This is, it's really simple. Or at least limit the amount that you do, I should say. Oh boy, Kuneros, yay, or whatever his name is, I don't know, I'm watching this low res, and he got exiled, that's a shame. Alright, so there's the emblem, finally, after he uh, got back to the game, after cooking a seven course meal, still doesn't work, oh my god, Des, learn how to play the game, and bam, he's not quite dead, but he ain't gonna emblem me now, is he? Alright, yeah, any day now, asshole, there we go, oh, Revenge of Ravens, wonderful, cool. And we've got another Archon. <laughs> now, the game has been going long enough that uh, it makes sense that we see some repeats. Huge mistake there. This doesn't trigger on tokens. I'm playing like an idiot. Um, I couldn't figure out what they were asking there for a second. It was really late at night. <laughs> there we go. It's like, where do you want to send the token? I'm like, what am I targeting? <laughs> what the hell? All right, there we go. I think, wait, did I'd have to watch that back again. Did... Did they not ding me on the attack trigger? Oh, because it comes in tapped and attacking, so it wouldn't trigger that, would it? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well, he's being a slow playing crybaby again. I mean, it's fine to slow play. There's the fourth one. There we go. It's fine to slow play players if they're playing, like, toxic ass cancer aids, you know, nexus stall infinite turn, like, Teferi mill their whole deck out Jace bullshit, okay? You need to waste an hour of their time. It is your duty to the community on MTG Arena to time those people out. There's another Basri. Are you even surprised at this point? Uh, that's the only reason I negative two'd him, because it would be funny. So I stacked the negative twos, because, you know, that's that's some funny shit. Uh, yeah, there it is. Goodbye. Get out of here. So he pulled all four of a card. I, I don't know if I've ever had that happen in paper. I mean, we went on for some turns, but like I said, that was, what, maybe 10, 15 turns? I don't think we even cleared 20. I wish I would have moused over my library and checked, but I am running 68 cards, by the way. 
Um, let's see. I pulled all three Basri's. I pulled three out of my four Banishing, and we're we're certainly I would say in the top half of the library. No assist of scrying, no assist of drawing, nothing that would artificially manipulate it. So just for fun, let me run down a point that people make that's valid, but I'm going to invalidate it. People see stuff like this and they're like, okay, there's like a million games played a day. Like legit, I think we hit a billion at some point. So it's probably several million games of arena played per day worldwide. And let's say a thousand people, maybe 10,000 people are recording a game. Well, somebody uploads footage that says, look at this crazy thing that happened in a game. Can you believe this? Well, if it was a one in 10,000 chance and there's 10,000 people recording a game every, I don't know, we'll say week. So it doesn't work this way, but there's, you know, a 100% chance. That's like I said, not really how it works, but there's a very good confident chance that someone will get some crazy footage because of the sheer number of games being played. It's like winning the lottery is hard, but somebody wins it almost every week. So, like, it's going to happen to someone due to the sheer number of tickets sold. So you can't look at one game and say this is an example of one thing that's impossible. But, 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 that is a valid way to look at probability. But if I tell you ahead of time, there is something wrong with this system. And then I say, let me prove it to you. Okay. I don't need a scientific sample size of 100,000 games to prove it to you, which, by the way, a guy on Reddit tracked a million games. And yeah, the shuffler's a broken piece of shit. So end of story. I mean, he literally proved it. He tracked every card drawn with like a third-party app that ties into Arena. So, end of discussion. But just to outline my point, if I say there's something wrong with the lottery system, it, it's skewed towards this, 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 and this, and whatever, and if I do this, it should screw with it. And then I go buy one ticket. One ticket. Not a very scientific sample size there. Not a very representative, uh, mathematically significant uh, sample to draw from. And then I win the jackpot after having told you that's what's going to happen. That was so unlikely to happen. The fact that it happened after just one try is actually more significant than if it happened after 10 or 100 or 1,000. So then you can draw a perfectly valid conclusion from one thing. So you can look at one game of Arena and say, what are the sheer odds that that happened? And with the whole, I have a, a theory, let's test it. Oh, look at the result. You know, the whole scientific theory process or whatever the hell they call it. You can't just with a completely open blank mind play a game and then see something anomalous and say, there, see, there it is. It's past the sheer numbers of the probability. If you say, I drew two of these already, I bet you I'm going to draw the third one. If, if you are seeing a pattern mentally and then you say, I bet this is going to happen and then that happens, it's more significant, like from a research standpoint, than if I said, okay, I drew my, my first two Banishing Lights. I bet in the next, like, three draws I'm going to get my third Banishing Light. And then instead I draw ten lands in a row. And then say, look at that. Look, the Shuffler's so broken I drew ten lands in a row. That's not what I said was going to happen. That's not how the Shuffler... It, it groups like cards. That was proven. That That's the theory, but also it was proven. But that's the theory people had before it was proven. Because people play paper, then they play digital, and they, they just think cards seem to group up more than they do in paper. It was just kind of an in-the-back-of-your-mind sense, which is not very scientific at all, but that's the basis of the theory. So the fact that I pulled three Basaries out of the three Basaries in my deck with the 68-card deck in the first, I don't know, 15 turns or whatever, that's pretty messed up. But then to also do three of the um, uh, Banishings in the same game, while also my opponent runs four of, gets the first three within the first what opening hand or first two draws i believe it was he gets a triple copy and then late game pulls the fourth one i mean are you kidding me let me just outline how impossible it is for for even just the one thing to have happened for him to we'll say start the game i'll assume that's what happened start the game with an opening hand with three of those uh speakers or whatever they were there is a 99.612415 percent chance that that won't happen so, uh, what is that? One in, uh, one in 250 shot. I play 250 games. Are you kidding me? I play that much in like a couple weeks sometimes. So actually I should see triplicates in my opening hand quite often. Add in mulligans, add in short games, add in ones where my opponent never shows up and you know, it times out. Yeah. I'm going to have a, you know, 250 opening hands pretty quick there. However, I have seen four copies of a card show up in my opening hand, uh, at least two times ever. I want to say three three and i've only played about six thousand games of arena according to their own stats that they email me there is a 99.9928 percent chance that that won't happen so i should virtually never see that it's not impossible i legitimately forgot how to convert that without just kind of doing it in my head with factorization into a one in number but it's just ridiculous that that would ever happen 
It's at least like you'd see it once in in several thousand. I, I know it would be somewhere in that scale. So the number of times I've seen it, okay, but then again, I've gotten four royal flushes at the casino. And I've probably played, I don't know, 100,000 hands. So it's above the spread, but I mean, not by much. Unlikely things happen if you throw enough samples at them is what I'm saying. But then you have games like this, okay? What are the odds that I will pull three of something and then three of something else that there only are three of while my opponent draws four of something else, three of which were in the first two turns? So you start adding this, you know, horribly impossible thing and this and this all simultaneously happening in the same game. Well, then you're up in the one in a you know, hundred million shot. I mean, it's, it's impossible. Can happen. And normally you'd be able to reduce it by almost 10 X because, you know, let's just pretend the average deck has 10 times four copies of everything. Well, it's not a duplicate of something they already played. It's a duplicate of any card at all showing up, except in this case, it's not because the theory we're trying to prove is that like cards, cards that you've already seen and drawn in the game are more likely to get drawn later. In fact, the extended theory that the guy who tracked a million games came up with was that uh, they're not storing the sequence of cards in like an array in memory because it's very inefficient and, and rare for you to have to know where those cards are. It's not a good use of the randomization system. It's not a good use of memory. So if you have an effect that says, look at the top six cards, your library, they will just randomly then from the remaining pool, uh, arrange six cards as needed and then show them to you. And then the sequence of the rest of the cards in the library are not determined until needed. And the theory is they're accidentally overcounting the card by one in the remaining pool because they're not tracking the remaining pool in an array. They're doing it the lazy way slash efficient way. I mean, okay, but servers only have so much memory and there's like what, several million games played per day. I get it. But uh, in his theory, and I didn't read the entire follow up, but uh, in the first section, he said, I think I know what's going on here. What they appear to be doing, because the, the distance of the, the variation consistently over a million games from pure random was almost exactly what you would expect if they're counting the card that's already in your hand as being in the library. So if I have four out of 60 of a card and I already drew one, and then they go to randomly determine what the next card is in my library because I'm about to draw it, they count out of the pool of, you know, 53 remaining cards, my card. So let's say I got three lands, one removal spell, okay, whatever. So what are the odds that the next card will be another one of my removal spells when there's three left? Well, it's three out of 53, except they do the math as four out of 53. They forget to eliminate the one that's already been removed from the deck. This seems like a very fixable, very, very stupid mistake that no professional programmer should ever make. But this is what the numbers suggest, and they still haven't fixed it yet. Uh, the total shift was like four or five percent off of random, but remember that's like four or five percent every card draw, every time you need to know what's on the top of your library, every game. So it starts to become somewhat cumulative. So that's why it always seems like you're drawing the same card over and over and over more than you should in paper and more than you would in paper. So slight annoyance that they should fix. Um, no, me and any other pro player that has figured out how this works is abusing the shit out of the system. I mean, remember the the land prioritization average keep algorithm that they do where people were just running a 13 mountain deck because they knew they could get away with it because it would draw two opening hands instead of one. And if either one of them had one mountain in it as opposed to zero, it would prioritize that. And then uh, within the next couple turns, they were so likely to pull another mountain and then they only needed two to operate the deck that they were... Uh, going in with an artificial like 10 card advantage and it went all the way to like the world championship national championship or whatever the hell it was the, the pt or whatever they were holding it went all the way there and everybody won with that stupid deck that's called cheating so if i've already drawn two banishing lights i play as if there's another one coming as if somehow i've cheated and stacked the next five cards in my library and i know at least one of them maybe two of them are another banishing and i i play as if that's going to happen and then that's how I make my decision-making about what to remove when, when normally you would wait for the biggest threat. And I've been winning games because of it. So because of a glitch in the system that I'm aware of, I am winning more games. D does that sound like something they should maybe address and fix at some point? It's not as bad as the, the 13 Mountain, you know, Shuffler Abuser deck, which I thought that Wizards' response to it was that they claimed they turned it off for the top level of the highly competitive tournament, and then it started to kind of backfire, but people just kind of powered through it. I don't know if that was ever established as true. 
they've hinted at it. And as far as I've heard, they've contradicted themselves a couple times, but they've said things along the lines of, oh, well, when a prize is on the line or when it's like a, a draft or a tournament or whatever, like I think for sure a draft, they say we turn off the hand assistance system. But in just normal ranked play or unranked play, they have the hand assistance system to eliminate, you know, bad, toxic, obnoxious games where you had no chance of winning from the get-go. I don't necessarily have a problem with that. It's just cut it off at like 18 cards because nobody should ever run less than 18 lands in a normal standard deck. I mean, sparing some just outrageous, anomalous, you know, broken, weird trash that doesn't even play magic normally, you would never run less than 18. That's just stupid. Even my banana deck runs 19. I mean, come on. So if somebody's trying to break the system and cheat and run a 13 mountain deck, they probably should turn it, turn it off just because of the numbers, because people are literally using that to cheat. So they never told us for sure, straight out, hey, we fixed it. They just said, oh, for drafts and for like sealed events and for like weird side events. And then for, I guess they, they said maybe potentially high level tournaments, they turn the hand assistant system off, but they've never proven it. And honestly, looking at the footage, it doesn't look like they do. So that's another thing they need to address is their their implementation of that. I think they need to make it very clear when it's on, when it's not. They shy away from it. They had to admit it because people are like, okay, there's no way my opening hand is this consistent. Like within the first week of the beta, somebody said, something's going on here and the devs just admitted it. And then people just kept talking about it, talking about it. Like, what the hell? You're rigging my opening hand. What is this bullshit? Like people are going to find a way to exploit this. And they're like, no, no, they won't. And then, well, they did. And then they never exempted 13 land ones unless they did it invisibly and didn't say it. They just, they hate talking about this because they hate telling new people who haven't heard this, the opening hand is rigged and we draw two of them and then choose between them. And then besides that, it seems to me that it over prioritizes low cost cards. So then spells that cost one or two show up in your opening hand more often because I think that CMC is included as well as land percentage. They claimed blatantly, absolutely word for word that that was not the case, but I just don't believe them. And then you've got the, oh, if you've already drawn one or two, you're more likely to draw the rest problem, which cascades into a big issue. So that's why, like, they need to fix this. They, they keep denying it. They keep pretending it doesn't happen. Then finally somebody said, you know what? Instead of just people's feelings or people tracking, like, 100 games, which is not enough to make a determination on anything, let's just have somebody with a plug-in track a million games. And then they proved it. They, they showed it right on Reddit. It got, like, 5,000 upvotes. And people were like, oh, okay, so it is broken. Well, there's the proof. Okay, cool. And that's the end of it. It's broken. Just that it's people are like, no, that's a paranoid it's, it's conspiracy theory. No, they proved it. Shut up. They proved it. You're wrong. The end. Shut up. Like, do, how do people still say, no, it's, it's, it's just people who think it happens too often, but it's just the human brain interpreting it wrong. No, they proved it. A million games. Shut the hell up. I'm so sick of these shuffle denying idiots. And by the way, as a fun little aside, there's actually a third thing that's rigged. So the opening hand land count, the uh, card groupings and light cards grouping up, there's something even worse. This is just blatantly trying to get you to lose the game if they want you to lose the game. So I have tracked right now, it looks like about 1,200 games, so 1,200 games. I am going first 32% of the time. Okay, if it was even 45, that would be like alarm bells going off, what the hell, levels of that shouldn't happen. 32 is down in the, okay, it's rigged, period. Like, the, it's that's not, oh, that might happen naturally. No, it's rigged, the end. That is the conclusion. But I went one further, because I noticed that in some circumstances, I go first more than I should. Because obviously, it's like, unless they just don't like me as a player, you can't have everybody in the community and everybody go first less than 50% of the time, somebody has to be getting the boost. In other words, for every time I don't go first, somebody else must be going first. So one person gets the detriment, one person gets the advantage, and I think it's split both ways. So there's something about my ranking, my decks, my play style, um, something, the amount of coins I have, have earned the number of games I've played. There's something about me that is causing me to go uh, second more than I should because they just, I guess they want me to win less. Obviously that, I mean, what else would it be? Going first is the biggest advantage in the game. And if you think, oh, but my opponent basically starts with eight cards because I don't get to draw and they do, that does not make up for it. They did this huge scientific study like 10 years ago, did all this math and said, no, that doesn't make up for it. I think unless the game goes to like turn 14, it doesn't tend to average out or something like that. So that was also proven mathematically. So if the game wants to stop someone from winning, they just simply make them go second more than they should. It's that simple. So I thought I figured out the couple circumstances that lead to me going second more often than I should. So I tracked that on a separate spreadsheet. I thought, okay, 
Uh, I, I don't even want to discuss it. Basically, one of the things you can do to throw it off. I'm not just going to outline, hey, here's how you cheat at Arena with the built-in cheating system they themselves designed, but still, I'm not going to give all the details out. But let's just say I've been playing with one deck all day and then I switch. That game wouldn't be counted on my second spreadsheet because that when you switch decks, it makes you go first more often. Just that's a fact. So on one sheet, I, I, I tracked every game I play, every a standard constructed ranked game, I should say. I don't count drafts. I don't count sub events, side events, silly events, you know, free casting events. And then on the other spreadsheet, I only tracked games that I thought would lead to it rigging the opening hand, and I went first on the second spreadsheet 21% of the time, indicating that I am absolutely 100% correct in my theory. And that second spreadsheet tracked, let's see, it'd be about 150 games is how high I went with it, but that's, you know, that's enough to prove it. Like I said, you, when you have a theory going in and then it's proven, that's more confidence than the numbers would suggest the confidence is. Like, when you already think you know what's going on and the numbers reinforce it, then then you can say with more certainty that that's what's happening than if just something happened that you didn't expect. Plus, we have two data sets and you can compare them to, you know, each other and all that. And that makes up for the fact that I don't have, you know, 10,000 games tracked. But, uh, yeah, who goes first is rigged. That's, uh, I proved it. it. It is a proven fact. I'm not going to say, in my opinion, no, I proved it. The numbers prove it. The only thing that could uh, say I'm wrong is, oh, I tracked it wrong. Well, I didn't track it wrong. It's pretty simple. I, I have two columns. Did I go first? Did I not go first? And I put a one in each on Excel. It's really simple. And I don't miss any games. And I don't selectively start counting. I, I count every game on a day where I decided I'm counting. It's really quite simple. So there are a lot of fairness problems, and uh, one of which I think is an accident, and that's the shuffler, and one of which they're clearly doing on purpose that are screwing with what is being presented to you as a perfectly fair and balanced game that is not rigged against you in any way, which it turns out is not true. So at this point, I, I would strongly recommend that the developers fix it because if they hold another $2,000 tournament and this rigged bullshit is involved, I could just sue them because they presented that as an even chance. If they do anything to screw with it, it is not a earned thing. It's a sweepstakes and you can't charge money to enter those. That's illegal in the U.S. If you're presenting it as a co completely random, you know, card-based and skill-based game where everybody has a 50-50 chance of, of starting the game or whatever, and then you go and rig it, it's just, I think they do turn it all off for a, for a high-level tournament. I really do. And a sample size of, you know, eight games at the last tournament, you're never going to prove it. You would need so many people. Oh, in case you missed my other video, um, once you've won 3-0 and in a draft, your fourth game will be the most rigged shit in the history of the game. They will put you up against an opponent that is an entire rank higher than you, like an entire, like if you're in in, in silver, they'll throw you up against a gold player. They've already said that that's how it works. Uh, but then also they'll rig their opening hand and they'll just, they'll just crush you. It, it's, it's widespread, it's a well-known problem. They just hand that person a free win and it's almost always somebody who is ranked way higher than you and got a perfect deck, but has like won one and lost two and they just want to give them a free win before they, you know, skunk out of the tournament. And it goes both ways. If you 0-2 a draft, your third opponent will be an absolute joke and your opening hand will be God's gift to an opening hand. I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but I, that's consistently just about 100% of the time. So. so yeah, I would strongly recommend everybody go on the forums and demand that they fix this. That's about all I have to say about that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.